Evening world, it's about 7.15pm on Sunday the 1st of July 2018. I've just completed the second in a whole range of articles which one day will become a book. I did an article a couple of months ago on a modernistic look at Pluto and I sent it out to so many people it took me so long but I can't do that with this one. But this is my take on a modernistic look at Neptune. You'll be able to find it free in a few weeks time at the new age chronicles.com that's the online magazine i'm writing it for those people who regularly donate to my site there's about 10 of you will be getting all of these articles free of charge in a couple of weeks time so here we go a modernistic look at neptune neptune is the thur furthest most of the gas giant planets of our solar system with an orbit of 165 and a half years and spending just under 14 years in each sign of the zodiac. As with everything Neptunian there was controversy about who actually discovered it and when it was discovered. Although in recent years it's been accepted by most astronomers and astrologers that it was discovered in September 1846 and that the th French astronomer Urbain Le Verrier should be credited with its discovery. It is noteworthy that Galileo did map the position of Neptune in both 1612 and 1613, but mistakenly classified it as a fixed star. After initial names of Janus and Oceanus were rejected, the name Neptune became accepted throughout the Western world following in the nomenclature of the other planets, all of which had been named after Greek or Roman, Roman deities. The mythology of Neptune is well defined from the Greek. Born of a mating between Kronos and Rhea, the two most human-like of the Titans, Neptune, or Poseidon as he was known in ancient Greece, along with his brother Hades, Pluto, and his sisters Hestia, Demeter and Hera, Vesta, Ceres and Juno in Roman mythology, was consumed and absorbed by Kronos, his father, who was fearful of his children usurping him as he did to his father, Uranus. When the youngest of his siblings, Jupiter, Zeus, freed them from the belly of Kronos, the three brothers split the firmament between them, with Jupiter taking the overworld, Pluto taking the underworld, and Neptune taking the water world. It is for this reason that in today's astrology, Neptune is seen as ruling the seas and the oceans, as well as the astrological signs of Pisces and the twelfth house, the most watery of the twelve astrological signs and houses. Neptune's atmosphere is primarily hydrogen and helium at the higher levels on top of a lower atmosphere of ammonia and methane. The combination of these elements create a bright blue appearance with occasional white clouds and irregular dark blue spots indicating storm patterns similar to Jupiter's great red spot. It has a faint ring system and a number of satellites, of which Triton is the largest, occupying over 99% of the mass orbiting Neptune. Triton, unlike any other satellite in the solar system, goes retrograde, suggesting that eventually it will impact into Neptune. Neptune's discovery coincided with a number of different developments in society, all of which can be said to have Neptunian themes. The first global drug war with the opium wars in China, the invention of the camera, the use of mesmerism and hypnotism for the first time, the first commercial brewing of alcohol, the first common use of anaesthetics, and the writing of the Communist Manifesto, all aspirational developments for a better social order. If there is one word that would summarise the astrological influence of Neptune, that word would be nebulous. It could be said that only since July 2011, the time that Neptune completed its first orbit of the Sun since its discovery, has its qualities from an astrological perspective become clearer. Viewed in a challenging way, Neptune is the planetary energy associated with gullibility, escapism, avoidance, addiction and neuroses. It is where the capacity for fog, cloud, mist, treacle and quicksand in one's life is strong. The gullibility can be seen when planets in the horoscope are squared or opposed to Neptune and the individual will look at others and only see the good sides of the other person, not the bad ones. The escapism is shown when the individual with difficult Neptune aspects will live in cloud cuckoo land, not wishing to even be even able to see the reality of their situation. 
Similarly, this attitude contributes to the avoidance of certain things or issues in one life to the point of deliberately not wanting to recognise behaviour on the part of others, or even of oneself. The addictive quality of Neptune is not only the capacity for alcohol or drug abuse, it can also be seen in other forms of addiction such as sugar, chocolate, sex, chemical medicines, junk food or other forms of substance that are simply not good for one's body or soul. The neurosis can be a combination of any of the above, with the added criteria that the individual will experience the world as being the way they want it to be, rather than dealing with it the way it really is. When viewed from a more neutral perspective, Neptune is seen as the planetary energy that deals with all forms of artistic expression, such as art, music, film, dance, photography, theatre, anything that stresses the more artistic and sensual. It is the planet of the dream and the ideal, as well as being the difference between the fantasy and the imagination, in that one stays between the ears or else ends up in disappointment, whilst the other can not only be imagined, but also created. Neptune from a positive perspective is the planet of illumination and enlightenment. It can strongly influence the relationship that one has with the divine, no matter how you view your interaction with divinity. It governs the intuition, and perhaps to a lesser extent, the instinct. Neptune is one's capacity for compassion and empathy, as well as the genuine desire to help others less fortunate than oneself. From a physical health perspective, Neptune is common in the charts of people who have issues with the glandular system, particularly the thyroid, as well as eyesight issues, again, the vague, the nebulous and the uncertain. By transit, Neptune brings a range of experiences, ranging from dissolution, weariness and fatigue, to artistry, a greater sensitivity to the environment and an empathy for those unable or unwilling to help themselves. These transitory experiences can last for up to two years, so should not be taken lightly. Under a difficult Neptune transit, long-term commitments such as marriage, contracts, mortgage, etc. should be avoided, whilst on a positive Neptune transit, the opportunity for a more refined, sophisticated and elegant way of life will present itself, whilst the influence of those who attempt to drag you down or keep you the way you've always been will dissipate. Neptune remains nebulous, even in the 21st century. It can drag you down, make you tired and dissolve things and situations around you. It can also inspire and intuit and refine your life in a way never previously imagined. As with everything in astrology, one's intent and intentions are the guiding light here and if used for the right reasons, Neptune will illuminate your path forward and inspire, to, inspire you to a greater and more profound spiritual way of living your life. There you go, that's my current take on the 21st century version of Neptune. Hope it was helpful and it will be in print or at least online in the New Age Chronicles. Google it, find it. Hope that helps. Catch you later world. Bye.